Yeah, I've just come back from uh, a week in Canberra. Had a holiday. Working holiday. Oh, I did a gig up there, but I was, it was essentially a holiday. Family fam- holiday. Family you, holiday. You got family up there. Yeah, Kieran's brother lives up there. Andrew. Does he stay at his place? Stay in a hotel? No, he stayed in a hotel. Oh, um, for a week. About a week, yeah. And Midnight All were playing again, so I went and saw them again. How many times is that? That's <laughs> five, I think. Five, four, five. Do you know him well enough to go backstage? No, I don't know him that well. No, I did speaks and specs with him once. Good man. Pete, yeah. Yeah, good man. I reckon he, yeah. Oh, I'd love mm. to meet the rest of the band, but, you know, you can't just stand the side of the stage and go. Oh, but, you know. <clears throat> Pete, tell, t- tell Peter well. that Dave O'Neill's here. Well, he'd be well aware of you. Yeah, he, yeah. He knows what's going on. Pete. He's an old lefty, isn't he? Yes, he is, yes. Mm. Absolutely. Wow. He says a few things on stage to, you know. Yep. And all, anyway, that were great. But anyway, exciting though. We got a tour of Parliament because, oh, you know, the immigration good. minister lives opposite me in Melbourne. So, Oh, really? Well, he used to be like a opposition backbencher. Then Albo got elected and he's a, a mates with Albo. Now he's the immigration minister. So, and who, did he take you around? or who Yeah, he you? showed us around. He gave us a tour. It was fantastic. Did you go, where's your, where's your desk? Like you do when you show someone around your school. Yeah, he showed us his office. <laughs> <laughs> where's your but, desk? You know, because you know, we feed his cat when he goes to Canberra. See, this is big. And so he rings up and he goes, can, can you feed our cat again? We the whole him and these kids and his wife are going to Canberra for how long? Were they would they go for? Oh no, they just go for like four or five days for the opening of Parliament or whatever. I don't know. We, you, we you feed, feed the cat. We feed the cat, and I go, that's no problem at all. But can you let my second cousin Tula into the country now that you're immigration minister? <laughs> 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 right, he goes, what? I go, don't worry, it's a joke. Anyway, <laughs> but seriously, seriously, we're, we're, I ring him when I go, I've got your cat here. Yeah, not, not looking to. You know who's good with cats? Tula. She's very good with cats. We let her in, <laughs> but um. So that was great. So he just he just showed us around, and then um and then took us into the deputy PMs, which is Richard Miles. He's a big Geelong supporter. Oh, he so he had all the cat right. stuff, yeah, and he's right. he's a member for Geelong. He, minister for who? For what? He's defence minister. Yeah, I like him. And so he he was there, and then he goes, "We should get a photo." And he calls out, and some colonel comes in in a uniform and takes a photo. Fantastic. Like a full on military person. Just you and the whole family. Yes. Oh, the, the kids would have enjoyed it because they got they're they love politics. Sad. The two of them love politics. Yes, yeah, they're very savvy. So and then we're in the corridor, and then we go outside Albo's. It was like waiting to see the headmaster. Yeah, uh, we didn't get to see him, but because he was busy. But we, he goes, wait here. Busy prime minister. Busy. What are you talking about? Anyway, he went out time to see you. Yeah, Neil family's here. Yeah, and we waited sort of thing. And Barnaby, all these politicians were just walking past. Barnaby, Barnaby Joyce. Joyce. Was his face red? Yes, and he, you know, there was a bit of smell of. Someone been having a beer? Oh, it's Barnaby. <laughs> <laughs> a few, a few of the um, uh, Jim Chalmers. He's the uh, oh yeah treasurer. He oh, came yes. up. He had quite a chat. tall. Is he quite yeah, tall? Yeah, yeah, tall. He's tall and skinny. Yeah. Yep. Um, your local member? No, hang on, not your local member. Teal, the teal lady. No, I didn't see any of the teals. Teals, well, you know, not much to do really because they, what they, what, what they, can they do? Well, they, they're trying. They're trying. They're they're, they've got, they've got a presence. They're getting involved. Yeah, getting involved. Didn't see. No, no, Josh. Barnes, he must be St Kilda kind of area. Oh, he was right. there. But what was funny, they, they would recognise me, which is hilarious, and some of the journos. Isn't that good? Yeah, that's funny. Hey, Dave O'Neill, what are you doing here? <laughs> so you were in areas that only... Oh, you couldn't get through. If, if you were public, there's no way. They, so did, what did you have to do to get through? Because one of your kids could, you know... Well, that's the thing. Did they say no photos? No, photos were fine. But... The kids and Kieran went to question time. I couldn't go because I had to do a voiceover. But uh, lad broke it from my hotel room. But anyway, <laughs> whatever. It's the life of a comedian. And they went, but you can't. They said you can take photos, but you can't publish them or something. Of course. And so, um, and, we, and then we did the tour. Yeah, we took a few photos, but there were guards and stuff around. But it all seemed pretty jovial. They were all very friendly. Yeah, it's you know, it's, it's very Australian. It's very strange. There you go, mate. No worries. Yeah, you'll be right. Yeah, go on through. Yeah, and it, did, it had and the different carpets. So House of Reps have got green carpet. Yeah, and then the Senate have got red carpet. So the carpet tells you where you are in the building. Apparently. Oh, so, that's interesting. Is it a bit more a bit more plush in the Senate? The seats look more comfortable. Yeah, yeah. And then we went to the old Parliament House. Not with the. We just went by. You can get that's like a museum now. The old just Parliament House. Stand on the house. stairs and go. Well, may he say. Yes, I did that. I've done that. They were actually doing construction work and you couldn't do it, but last time I went, I did that. Yeah, kids would have loved that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, my though, so. Sorry. But yeah, it was exciting to go to Parliament. It was really exciting. Yeah, because you're, you're very much into the into that. Into you politics. Know, into politics. And, you know, you get to see where it all happens and you get to, did you, you know, did you see the, did you see the cafeteria? 
Yes, yeah. I saw one of them. So how yeah. does it work? Do they have, they have a tray and line up, or what do they do? Is it? Yeah, I think they do. They don't line up with the tray. No, th- this was more a cafe style, but you, I don't think we actually saw the cafeteria. We saw oh, a cafe, okay. but there's no bar there anymore. So the bar's been turned into a childcare centre. So, so you can bring the kids, drop yeah. them off. Yeah. Oh, that's a good idea. Yeah, that's right. So that was one of the things they changed. You and know. did you see anything historical, like the big stick that they bang on the door with? Yeah, like? yeah. There's yeah. Well, there's, there's a lot of. I didn't actually see the big stick. No, no. I'm getting mixed up with the old Parliament. There's replicas of. Oh right. Old Parliament was interesting because Bob Hawke. You go into the Prime Minister's office there. Yeah. And Bob Hawke's uh, consulted them about what it. It's the actual room where he used to sit as Prime Minister. Yeah. So he came back and told them what sort of that furniture. This is how I had it all set out, and he had a peephole into his office from his secretary, so the secretary could see if he needed... I suppose it was before computers and stuff. And so so she could see if he needed to be saved. Yeah, or right. he'd need another beer. I don't know. Well, but we were all making jokes of where's the fridge and all that, and the tour guide said, no, 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 he was, he was, non, he was a non-drinker for his whole time as Prime Minister. Non-drinker? Yeah, for the whole time as Prime Minister, he reckons. But then I'm thinking, what about the America's Cup? When he said, if anyone... They take anyone, the day off. They out there and bum... The boss that, is that, a that was, Yeah, they got to give the day off. What's he looked do with pissed that? then. Oh, I don't. Do you reckon? Uh, no, no, because he was very excitable and very happy. He was. Yeah. He was. Oh, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, no, I dare say he probably was off the, off it, off the booze. Yeah, probably. Do you reckon when he when Keating ousted him and he didn't want to go? That's what happened with him. They had an agreement that he was meant to go, but he said in the end, "Nah, nah I'm not going, Paul. I'm going to stay." And then they got. Rid of him anyway. They probably. Do you reckon he cracked a can that night? <laughs> yeah, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's good. So you've, you know. Exciting times. Yeah, um, very exciting times. And, but you did do any pranks or anything? Did you? No, <laughs> sure. Didn't... Have. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> but you don't want to get arrested. That's the thing. You know what I mean? Oh, like, if I, I, I you know, as, you know, that's right. You know, if you make a joke, like, I had something happen the, on the plane the other day, which was very weird. Like you can't to... make jokes. When you go, no, about bombs and stuff on a plane. When, you, when you're lining up for your tickets, you mm-hmm. can't you can't say anything. Make a joke. Says, says no. the sign, please do not make jokes. Yes, that's right. So we're going to Nusha. Nusha. Yeah. Well, I get on the plane. We're sitting there, and you know, because you've got you're not looking forward to it because you know up the front of the plane, uh, midway. No uh, business the, class. You know, window. Window. What do you call the one? Business uh, class. There wasn't any on that flight. Oh. Yeah, you got the extra leg room. Ex- ex- oh, when I went on Rex, they call it Rextra egg room. Rex- and I said to the woman, she bought the trolley, don't you? You're going to need that Rexican food? <laughs> Quick joke, on topic. The um, pilot laughed. He, <laughs> uh, I told the pilot as um, as I walked on up to the plane, I said, I'm looking forward to my Rextra leg room. <laughs> he goes, You got any more jokes? <laughs> <laughs> Rextra. Anyway. Anyway, so. Because you worry because you go, oh, there could be long lines, it could be delayed, oh, it could yeah. be, you know, you know, carry on. Hey, when you get on, you're going to – because I want to get on early and get the – I want to get my bag above me. Oh, you're not one of those annoying people who lines up first in the queue. Yes. Are you? <laughs> What's wrong with that? Do you, I do like you to not... be the rock star, the last one on. But that means you won't get a, you won't get a spot because the, the, we only had a carry on. We didn't have we didn't have the we only had carry on. Have so you ever had the announcement made about you? Is uh, Mr. Glenn Robbins make his way to to gate four? Oh, because you're late. Mm. Yes, yeah. I had it. It was me and Tony Barber. <laughs> <laughs> and you would imagine Tony Barber because remember he used to do that funny run at the start of the show. Yes. If you had to catch a flight, <laughs> you reckon he would have done the funny run to get on the flight? Yes. Yeah. Anyway, um, I've got a story about, about my that. Phone. I'll tell you for the end. Okay. I've got a bit of if you a bit remember. of comedy. Um, True story. Uh, so what happened? What was weird? So, what so th- th- we finally get on. I go, and you know, we got, you, we're on. Mm. We're leaving. We're leaving on time. Got my bags. We're going on a holiday. <sighs> we're going on a holiday. Then the hostie comes up and says, uh, "There's been a security breach." Oh, and pointed at me. Now, what would you say at that pr- point? Would you go, "What the?" Would you panic? There's been a security yeah, absolutely. breach. And pointed at me, but knowing. I don't know. It reminds me, you know, I, go, I reckon she's having a joke with you because you're a comedian. You're exactly yeah. right. But at that moment when she said, there's been a security breach, I'm going, oh, no, that means we're going to – you are not sitting in the seat that you're meant to be sitting in. 
I'm going, I know the plane's full. I know that this is trouble. I, I know the, uh, in, in a split second, she goes, there's been a security breach. Your ticket should actually say Russell Coit. Uh, and I'm going, fuck you. Did you not like that? or No, because you can't. You, what did Selena well, say? She, we both, everyone in the aisle rolled their eyes and went, that's not appropriate. No. I mean, I can't make jokes. I can't make jokes about bombs and stuff on a getting material. Yeah. I can't I can't walk on and go, look, there's been a security breach. If someone heard me say security breach as I'm lining up, it's yeah. not it's, it's look, it's not Russell Coy, it's me. You know. Did no she apologize or No. Any extra snacks, drinks? No. Oh, you know, so you know my point is you can't make jokes when you're in the no. when you're in the in the big house like you were. No. Well, people in authority, it's like cops making jokes to you or yeah. I remember when I hurt my back and I was in hospital and the two young nurses come in and they said, there's been an issue. Um, we're going to have to inject this up your backside. And they hold up this giant needle. Yeah, I went, that's not funny. And I went, what? And she goes, yeah, lift up your clothes. I'm like, that's seriously? Not that's and then they just funny. laughed and they squirted him at me and it was water and ran off pissing themselves. <laughs> It was all right at the time. No, it's, but it's it's using it's it's exploiting their power to your uh, your your own detriment and I fear. Know. I made them give me a sponge bar later. <laughs> oh God, here's the music. Hang on. Somehow related now, please welcome your hosts, Glenn Robbins and Dave O'Neill. Well, welcome to the show. Somehow related, we get two topics, we're going to work out how they're related. The music puts you in a good mood, I reckon. Yeah. Who is that done by? Uh, Kit. Kit Warhurst, Myth's brother, Myth from Spicks and Specs, I watch, brother. I, I often think of him when I watch Spicks and Specs, and um, and I think of him having done our music. Well, you know when you you know he does the music on a lot. He did the music on Rosehaven, very good. Yeah, he does a lot of music on different TV shows. And did you, Kit? Did I pay him? Yes, I did. Yeah, I, I paid him. I got that music done for my pilot, Dave, and then we just had started using it on this. Ah, so that's that's where that music's from. Oh, so it's 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 second hand. It's second hand, basically. Second but this hand. has lasted longer than that pilot. <laughs> very good show, that. Oh, it's, oh it's very, very good show. Yeah, very, very excellent show. Um, now, what, should we get the topics? Yes. Two topics that aren't related, that don't seem like they're related. Yeah. But they actually are, which is, what, you know. What are they, Sam? Margarine and pink. I assume she means pink the colour, not, not pink, pink the, uh, the rock what's star. It, she, what's it, her She's real American. Name? What's yeah, it? that's a good question. I don't know her real name. Andrea, maybe? She's gone from a full name R- to... Rochelle? Cha- imagine if I said to you, I've changed my name from Glenn Roberts. I'm gonna what go colour would you choose? Blue. I was going to say grey would be good for you. <laughs> what, what, I'm going to go brown. <laughs> <laughs> Have you heard uh, about Dave and Glenn? You got yeah, the podcast? That's no longer, they don't use the names. It's hosted by Blue and Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Pink. Pink. It is a funny choice, but it suits her. I mean... She's oh, but done he, well. But, but the name or the, the name becomes becomes you. Yeah. Well, the aforementioned speaks and specs means nothing to most people. That's a BG song, but now it means that show. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Whereas when it first started, people were like, "What a dumb name!" But it doesn't matter in the end. Yeah. No. It, and you don't question it because you because you never want to someone one who is cool. You never question cool. Because you go, well, we all know why she's called Pink. I don't know why she's called Pink. <laughs> you know, I, I I haven't heard anyone use that name. Anyway, shouldn't be talking about Pink. I don't think any babies being. I bet you there's some babies born called Pink now. Pink fans. Are there any other colours that are that are names? Amber. Red. Amber. Red. Red. Yes. I saw Red the other day. <laughs> How is he? He's all right. He's there with his uh, partner. Red, the, you're talking about Red Simon. Red Simon's blocking the bread aisle. And I'm like, oh, look at this guy. Out the way. He's like, so I, I sort of walked around them. And then I just heard this voice. Oh, there's that comedian. <laughs> it's Red Simon. He was up for a chat, was he? Yeah. Of course, he was uh, famous for hey, hey, Saturday. Gong him, Red. And, Skyhooks. Uh, yeah, Skyhooks. It's guitarist and Skyhooks. And uh, I was on stage with the Skyhooks. I know you sang the um, like I got through limbo as Uncle Arthur. And the audience went, what's, "Why are we watching this?" 
Um, you know that's good for 10 seconds and then it's just yeah, like... It's, it's good for a little while and then nah. you do a bit of a dance and they go... Well, you no. do a verse and a chorus and you get into the... And everyone's like, oh, what? <laughs> do the lie, Golden Street Limbo. You'll go... And, yeah, yeah, put Shirley back on. The anyway, Shirley red. Uh, are there any other colours that are people's names? Yellow, blue, mm, oh, maybe... Green, green maybe green's more. a surname. Um, uh, blue, black. Black's, Black's a, a surname. Yeah. Uh, t- uh, Orange. Orange is purple. A, is a, a fruit. Um, what? That's a pretty pathetic name to call a fruit. What do you orange. want to call that orange ball on there? No, what about orange? <laughs> <laughs> no, I reckon it's good. You reckon? The poor old carrots had to go something different, didn't they? Yeah. Well, they've already taken orange. We can't be orange. Bananas didn't go yellowy bl- with black bits. Do you like pink as a colour? Do you, are you are you confident enough in your masculinity to wear a pink shirt? I think I've seen you in a pink shirt. Interesting, you should say that. Because have you ever had your colours done? No. Remember that was very popular for a while. You get yeah. your colours done. Say, so you, oh, you're more an autumn, or you're a spring, yeah, you're a summer. Yeah. When I go and do, have you been paying attention? Uh, I put myself in the hands of the wardrobe department. Well, they give you. That's one of the few shows I've been on where they actually give you a shirt to wear. Well, they've got it because. They've got to blend the whole team. Yeah, oh, I see. So at the ABC, they don't bother with that. They're like, what shirt? Oh, yeah, that'll be all right, mate. That'll be all right, Gary. Oh, sometimes they have shirts for you. Well, at the, uh, the front bar, they just have a big rack. You go choose your own shirt. Oh, they've got all those check they've shirts. They've got all the rack. There's just a rack there, and everyone has. Anyway, mm. um, and they give me shirts, and I go, they go, there's a choice of two or three. And then often there'll be a pink one. I go, am I a pink guy? Oh, I think you can pull off pink. And it's Bayside. It's Bayside. <laughs> but it's Nick, where, Re- Nick Rewald, he wears pink shirts. He's Bayside. He? He's Bayside, man. I well I, it must be I can get away with pink. And I, I would never have done I would never go and openly buy a pink shirt. Don't get me wrong, I'm not being in you know, uh, casting aspersions against people who wear pink. I'm just saying I don't feel like I'm a pink guy, but I am a pink guy. I think you look good I don't look good in pink. You don't look good in pink? What what are you? A Graham Graham you're a brown guy. I think I think I look like a, a pig if I wear pink. <laughs> like porky pig. Oh, if you wear pink. Yeah. Well, I guess I, I don't want to. I don't want to make. Yeah, but I suppose if, if you would be large and pink, darker colours are better. If you're big boy. Yeah, I guess. Um, so uh, yeah, so I wear pink and I wear different florally ones with flowers on them, and and people go, that looks quite good. Oh, I like that. But I've got one shirt at home that's checkered pink. Oh, I don't like it. It like never it. works. It I, never I've works. got like maybe a Hawaiian shirt with a, quite a strong pink in it. That's, that's as far as I go. What? A, okay, here's a question. In your life, things that are pink. It's like the start of a song. In my life, my things, things that, that are pink. Anything in your life that's pink. Hmm. Tool. Gee, that's tough. Your, your cat's tongue? Your dog's tongue? The cat's, the cat's tongue. Um, I remember pink. the monkey's bum when we went to the zoo when we were in like grade two or grade three. Or yeah, something. the baboon. The baboon. The baboon. I remember baboon. seeing its ass and going, it's "Very pink." That's not. That's not good. Yeah, it looked like it was a bit giant hemorrhoid. Yeah. Yeah. Um, salmon. Um, salmon's pink. You do, you do you have salmon? Yes, we have salmon. How do you cook it? Sometimes in the oven. Sometimes in the fry pan. Yeah, but we're the same. I, well, I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I love fish, but I'm not a huge salmon fan. It's weird. I like salmon patties. Sometimes I'm in. M- but sometimes I go, I'm eating a bit of salmon, eating a bit of salmon, and then I go, enough salmon. I, I don't even want the second half. I go, enough salmon. Done. Draw the line. This guy who runs a fish shop near my house said, if a woman comes in 30s, 40s, 50s in exercise gear, it's always salmon. Yeah, I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, flowers. Oh, yeah, I love pink flowers. I love pink, pink. You know, pink was originally a masculine colour. Was it? Yeah, it was associated with blood and stuff, and so men used to wear pink. Well, that's like an in, interesting. Yeah, fact. in the days before World War One, and something changed where it became more feminine. But it, it was a ma- a man's color, pink, back in the day. Yep. Okay. Um, cherry blossom. What color is that? Is that white? Is yeah, that pink? So there is pink in there, isn't there? Rose. Carnations. Roses. Oh, yeah. Pink rose. I want to make you my lady. I want to make you my lady. <laughs> Who's that? A, make you my lady. Mark Holden. Yes. Mark Holland. Yes. And he used to do that song where he'd give roses to the audience and he'd say, I want to make him my lady. You know what's good about that? It's a thing. It's something to do. Well, well you know. It's great. He became a lawyer. Oh, what, after, the, after showbiz? Yeah, he became a barrister. As did the girl that used to be on the, the glass house. 
Corinne Grant. Yeah, she became a, a... She's a lawyer. She's good on her. She had a kid. Um, orchids, the pink, they're a beautiful flower. They're orchid. Very delicate. Yes. A pink orchid. If I said, Dave, got your present, got your pink orchid, you'd go. That on. used to be um, Sam Pang's nickname in the footy team. I did too. The orchid, because he only... Came out in perfect conditions. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he only flourished in perfect conditions. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Prawns. Oh, yeah, I love prawns. Are they pink? Yes. Prawn- what colour are they before they're cooked? I think they're sort of pinky white, aren't they? Yeah, they but they go no, really... No, you see green prawns though, don't you? Are those green prawns? See any green prawns? No. Huh. Okay, uh, prawn crackers are pink too. Oh, they're very pink. Anything strawberries pink, so strawberry icing. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, we have a, we occasionally make that kind of cakes and stuff at home. Strawberry cupcake. Strawberry. Strawberry. Strawberries are kind of pinkish. Something. Ready, ready In the middle of them, the middle of them. Um, Apples, pink ladies. Oh, love yes. a pink lady. Had one yesterday. Would you ever, you know, think about maybe painting one of the rooms inside your house pink? Yeah, yeah. I think we've got like a. No, we had a red. We sort of a reddish room. Uh, we had kind of a room, sort of pinkish red in our last house, and the the name of the paint color was called Lickety Split. <laughs> Lickety Split. Don't you love those? That's a book, isn't it? I think it might be. Yeah. What is it? Lick- yeah. And, Let's just talk you about know those it. Japanese pickles? They're often pink. You get with sushi, they're little pickles. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they're, they're pink. pink. They're pink. Um, just while you're on that, is there some, when, when they vent new paint colours, they, do they sit around a table yeah. and go, I've done geeks for Julux, and I've said who invents the paint names here. Oh, have you? Really? Yeah, yeah. And it's like a, <laughs> it's like a committee or something like that. Oh, really? Yeah. Because yeah, there's so many of them. I also want to talk to the guy who comes up for the categories on Spotify. Like coffee morning on a Thursday, or like you know, yeah, all these right. random, you know, relaxo Friday, you know. There'd be some guy doing that, some person. You go, how is Easy Sunday any different from Cruising Thursday or whatever the names are? I mean, who came up with the Parmigianas of the world? They've got a list here. <laughs> they have got Parmigianas of the world because <laughs> we're at the pub. You know what? But Dude, what I makes mean, there's a good? rule. There's, I mean, obviously, you go. There's a real stretch when you get to Can- Canadian Parma. I think it's bacon and maple is syrup. Australia, but I thought Australia would. Is it, is it all around the world? Is it what originally Italian? Yes. We were talking about this the other day. Did we? Was I talking with you or something? No, I, I was might talking have been with the on kids. Here. Yeah. Parmigianas were originally Italian. It's an Italian thing. There's a good TV show for but you. But they're big. Do. They're big in Australia. Parma, 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 or Parmi. And there's this whole thing. What in different states they say Parmi? We say Parma. I'm not a Parmi expert because I find them too. I, I they're like too half. Full on. They're too too full, too full on. on for you. They're not on your food your food mop. Fod mop, man. Uh, okay, so back to pink. Pass your body a pink inside well, your yeah, mouth. If you open yourself, if you're in an operation, there's, mm. there's a bit of pink in there. And let's just leave it at that, shall we? <laughs> Remember Peter Halley's joke at the Logies? <laughs> no. Oh God! All right, so pink was on, right? She was on. <laughs> she was on. <laughs> no. She was on, right? Yeah. Pink was on performing. Yeah. Tony Collette came on wearing a very short dress. Right. Very short dress. Yeah. And um, oh, Peter yeah. Halley came out and said, I just saw Pink backstage. <laughs> <laughs> Someone said, yeah, yeah, she sang some songs. He went, no, no, I'm talking about Tony Collette. <laughs> anyway, it got a, it was... You got a big laugh? I think so. It got a big, oh, kind of thing. Right. And anyway, so on the Monday, <laughs> it was the talk of the Logies, because I think the Logies were pretty boring. This was years ago. I was on Nova, so it would have been 20 years ago. Oh, okay. And so... She's like, we gotta get, we gotta get Tony Collette on to talk about that joke. Oh, yeah, talk about the would. joke. No, we got her on, and then the producer comes in during the song. Tony's Don't there. Say, Tony's yeah. but she's having second thoughts because she doesn't want her mum or a nana to hear this. Yeah, of course. So can someone? So Cheesy got on the phone. I still read. He's going, Tony, it's Cheesy. No, nah, look, we're not gonna make fun of you. No, look, it's no, you're gonna be great. No, Tony, no, don't hang up, Tony. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> so she spoke to us about it. I can't remember what, even what she said, but I do remember that bit. Yeah. Well. Let's just leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Leave it at that. It was that funny. It's a funny yeah, joke. It's a good joke. <laughs> yes. It's All right. Well, let's do uh, margarine. Margarine. You know what? I'm interested that Sam didn't do a three way, mainly because people we've done him before. Napoleon was very big on the pink. He invented margarine. No. Yeah. Well, not him, but he had a competition in France to invent another spread to feed. The soldiers, how and that's how what? that's how. Mar- oh, you listen to this podcast about margarine. But hang on. <laughs> so, what 
what was Napoleon? He was uh, Napoleon was what the, the general in charge of the country. Yeah, he was I realize that. But yeah. what years? Oh God, I don't know. 1600s, no. 1700s, I don't know. 1600s, yeah, So he and so what happened was someone, some food scientist or some cook, came up with margarine. It was like an imitation of butter, but it didn't because of course butter uses dairy. Margarine in those days used animal fat, so the first margarines brought out were just made with animal fat. But butter's made from animal animal fat. How is no, it? No, butter's made with dairy, with milk mainly. Is it? Butter's made. From, yeah, oh, sorry, milk, that's right. You, you beat it down, don't you? Yeah. Sorry. I and so you needed milk. They couldn't get enough milk yeah. to, for the soldiers. Yeah. And so someone came with the idea of animal fat spread, which was margarine. And, and so, was there any health thing behind it? No, not in those days. No. But then, then it got into a. Well, then they st- then they found that um, it became like a poverty food because it was so cheap to make. Compared I to butter. would have sworn it would have come out in like the sixties. Well, this is the thing. What happened in America, it was bought out and it was still animal fat and, and it was sold as a cheap substitute for butter for poor people, basically. Then in the, the 50s or the 60s, they used started using vegetable oil seeds to make and then it became a health thing. That's what we remember margarine as. Yeah. but it, As a health thing because it was, it was put forward as a healthy thing because it was used, using vegetable oil to make it. So but, seeds. So it's not... I mean, some say it was much better for your health. If you've got yes. high cholesterol, get off the butter, get on the margarine. Yes. And then there was a, then there, there was a cholesterol lowering margarine that came out. I'm not sure how well it worked, whether or not you can still. But get then, it. then they found out about trans fat, and they, yes. margarine contained some trans fat in there. Yeah. So, so you got your HDL and you got your LDL. Your HDL, oh, you know. HDL. My, my cholesterol's borderline. Oh, that's my doctor now. <laughs> <laughs> It's worse than borderline. Oh dear! <laughs> I've got to go on statins. Oh shit! Yeah. So, so margarine um, originally was a poverty food, but then it became a health food, and that's how we remember it in the seventies and sixties and stuff because it was really marketed and pushed and overtook butter for a while. But now butter's made a comeback. Yes, butter. Yes, yes, it has. What? what was I going and to you say? know who buys margarine a lot now? Vegetarians and vegans because it's vegan. Most of it's vegan. But is that is a thing where if you put margarine out on the ground, ants won't eat it? Is that the a yeah? Thing? Or, uh, or is it butter? Or is it no? They eat butter. You know, I did a gig for Nuttalex. Whatever. So people don't know. Nuttalex Honestly, is this, a- this, if the first time you're listening to this podcast, <laughs> you think that Dave may make up the gigs that he's done. But he doesn't. He has done gigs for. In fact, we should work I, the other I, way. I did the um the nut, the nut conference where you, you can only talk about the nine tree nuts. Peanuts were a no go. They're a legume. All right. I did the nut conference. <laughs> I did Nut and Lex the other day. I've done Hang two locks. Nut Lex. Nut Lex. The spread. The spread. You did a gig for Nut Lex. Yeah, they had their ninetieth year celebration. Did they have? Okay, condiments on the table. Pepper, salt. Did they have Nut Lex on the table? They had it. Absolutely, they had it. I bought some Nut Lex to suck up to them. So I, I, I get up there and I go, "Oh, what's this in my pocket?" And I pull it out. <laughs> Look at good. this, everyone. That's good. <laughs> and the guy at the end and goes, "Thanks for buying our product." Um, hazelnut, isn't it? Is it hazelnut? I think it might. Be. You know what? That's that's Nutella. It's nuts. It used to be nuts, but now they need, use more oh. seeds. I think it's vegan. These have a squirrel on the packet, so you think it's nuts because it's called Nutlex. I think it might be right. Oh, I, I, I've never had any of those, so you know. You've never had Nutlex? No, I've got some I don't at think home. So. Which is the chocolate one? The chocolate one that looks like chocolate. What's that? That's Nutella. Uh, see, it's all N words. No, but Nutlex Nut- 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 is like a like a butter spread. It's not flavored. It's like a butter. Oh, spread. I apologize. So it's a it's another margarine. Yeah, but so what they had with Nutlex is they I had apologize. a um, they had a cooking competition for oh, all the staff oh, made, made cakes out of Nutlex. Geez, some of them were beautiful. <laughs> Tell you what, when you say some of them, it means you had a few. Yeah, I had tasted a few of the cakes. <laughs> I think cake is my failing. I think I live a pretty healthy life, but I think cake is my favourite. A bit of homemade cake. Cake is it really you should have seen some of these creations. Anyway, so margarine and what what are the famous ads? Glory, glor, glor, Gloria. Rita the Eater Eater. Rita the The Eater Eater, is that right? I, I would like to meet the advertising agency that came up with that campaign. Yeah. <laughs> what have we got today? Oh, we've got a margarine to advertise. What's it called? It's called Eater? Yeah. Okay. Who's got ideas? I've got an idea. Let's create a character. Her name's Rita, and here's the cell line. Rita, the eater. Ri- uh, eater. Uh, eater. So she eats the product. She eats eater. And there was a little, no disrespect, the short fat lady would run around and yeah. turn up to like 
like events. Events. I'm Rita. How does it go? Eat Rita the Eater. We should play the ad. I can't remember. We have it for thinking music, I reckon. Yeah. Eater the Rita. Well, it was up there with um, (laughs) more of the other ones from that era. Um, You're soaking in it. You know, oh, all those yeah. ones. Uh, but it gets that, in, doesn't it? It gets in, yeah. Yeah. All Wash those, your hands. Yeah. Jeffrey. Um, not happy, Jan. That was a bit later. Yeah. I reckon uh, Rita was like 70s. I reckon that was 70s, really? 80s. Oh, Our older listeners will know. But it just, just seemed like a very odd campaign. Quite, And, you know, were they jokes? What is actually Rita eating? What, 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 Eater? Rita? She spreads it on bread and biscuits. Yeah, but it just seems... Well, you, Did gonna, you have margarine as a kid? I think we did for a short time. I reckon we did too. Yeah, and I reckon if you got a roll at school, they'd have margarine on it because it was. I reckon you're right. Yeah, I I remember margarine. Maybe Butter did the same thing. Margarine, where you bought a got two saladas, put Vegemite and margarine on it, and you squeezed it. The margarine would come out like a snake. Uh, Yeah, Uh, go out through the holes a lot easier than the butter would. I remember margarine. I remember Mum buying it in the seventies because it was easy to spread. Yes, and then uh, butter, and then, and then butter panicked, and then bought out their spreadable butter. Spreadable butter, yeah. yeah. But it was always no problem if you're making a quick sandwich. Bang! Did you leave it in the fridge or did you leave it in out margarine? You had to put it in the no, fridge, in, didn't you? I did a gig, I did a ad for butter. <laughs> did you? Which butter? Um, Western Star. Devondale. Devondale. Dressed up as Lauren Hardy, so the your friend. Oh, you used to know him, Alan Penland. Good who, man. Who was yes. fer- the, the head writer on Fast in. Forward. Fast Forward. He was also Ferret on Fast Forward. So he played the Sharpie character next to Magda's Ferret and Michelle. Yes. And so he he played Stan Laurel because he looks a bit like Stan Laurel, yes. the skinny one. And I yes. played Oliver Hardy because in the right costume, I look like Oliver Hardy. Could you do the voice? Skinny. No, we didn't have to do the voice. Just said Stan there. No, we had to do like a bit of slapstick. Was this an, this is, this was a, an ad on TV? Yeah. And so what it was... We he you do look like a, a, a I do Oliver. look like yeah, Hardy. Yeah, he would reach for the the margarine. I would pull the table out, and he would slip over and bang his head. I think because their physical you know, is second to none. But how's this? We're filming it in this small studio in Richmond, behind in the, like opposite, uh, sort of in the car park of a Coles, right? Yeah, and the guy's like, guys, we've got to speed it up because we've got the Devondale cow here. The actual cow from the Devondale cow, and the cow's cracking it in the car park. Oh, yeah, it was a real, it was actual. <laughs> it was cow. a real cow. Well, they'll have one. Surely they could have any. No, cow. they got the Devondale cow. Was it's Dev- not the same cow they use all the yeah, time. Yeah, it was the cow. And so I have a look outside, and this cow's going. Because <laughs> when all the cows get together, I reckon the Devondale's playing that card pretty early. You know, I'm the Devondale cow, don't you? <laughs> well, we're all going to slaughter, mate, and you're coming with us. No yeah. way, man! I'm the Devondale cow. I'm the Devondale cow. <laughs> so you did that? You did? Oh, wow, that's incredible! Yeah. Um, if we looked that up ago, on YouTube, I know we're going to be there. Yeah. Um, what? So what else can we say about about um, margarine? Margarine, only butter butters. Um, I don't know. Oh, oh, what about? It's not. I can't believe it's not butter. Remember that? I can't that, believe it's that, not butter. That was an American thing. Yeah. Did it come here? I remember it came here slightly. We, yeah, it came here a bit later. I can't. Yeah. I, I can't believe it's not butter. Because it became like a catchphrase oh, using jokes and it's stuff. A good, it's a good, um, it is a good catchphrase. Yeah. I yeah. can't believe it's not butter. Yeah. No, that's a good call. So what are, what are the big ones? There's, as you said, ser- uh, Oh, there's Eda. Wait, what are the big margarines? I swear that butter, butter has taken over again from margarine. I think it has actually taken yeah, over again. Yeah. You know what they do now? They go, butter, would you like, or would you like avocado? Because avocado. Yeah, it's is like a spread. Bit, it's a spread. You know that when I did Nutilex. That <laughs> so it's like, so it's like a, a jail you're in. What did you know, I did, did time in Nuttalex. What did you know, prison. I actually met the guy who's going to inherit the Nuttalex fortune because it's a family business. It's a family business, and the guy would who started that, would it be that good though? Is it still clicking oh, along, mate? It's because of vegans and vegetarians. That's their main market now. But don't they realize that it's look? I don't want to be sued or anything, but margarine's not that healthy, is it? No, but they've made it. No, it's healthier these days. Oh, it's much better. They got rid of the trans fat. Oh, they got rid of the trans fat. They got rid of it. They had a meeting they got rid- with a whiteboard. <laughs> Number one. Sorry, thing. trans. You get your much. They got HR to tell trans get out. You're right. Get You're your not wanted anymore. Get, no. get out of here. No, it's healthy, healthier. Right, and so oh, and vegans love it. it, and vegans are a growing part of the pop. Uses a vegan, growing part of the population. So, gone. So what anyway, if, what if Yuzi has margarine at home? It probably has no legs. Because it's vegan. Because it's vegan. And anyway, so um, the guy was there who was like maybe 80 
and his dad started the company, and then the eighty year old has got a son my age who's just going to inherit the Nuttalex fortune. Imagine, is he, imagine. Is that his name, Nuttalex? Is that his surname? <laughs> I get he lives. He lives near me. He lives because our kids went to the same kinder, and so I got. I got on quite well with him. So how do you come up with that name? Is it? A, it's from nuts. It was originally made from nuts. Okay, so we got we got that much. So how do you get from nut to nut X? I think they just wanted a name that sounded like a butter. Hmm. Wouldn't you love some of that sweet nut X money just to kick back? Yeah, I guess. That's only Roger over there. How did he make his money? <laughs> nut yeah. X money. Yeah, he'd be. <laughs> No, Alex, money. He'd be raking it in. Anyway. So, you, but you would never, if you were cooking, say, would you go, I'm going to cook something, mm. pancakes, to so say you're making pancakes. Mm. Would you put a dob of Nuttalex in the pan or would you put a dob of butter? Well, if you're a vegan, you, you put would. put a bit of double. If me, I would put butter in. Yeah. But then again, I use oil. I use olive oil. What's the difference between that and, and, and a margarine? It's similar. It's same. It's made out of seeds or whatever. Oh, yeah. Thinking olive oil is, is, I mean, I've talked about vegetable oil before, but olive oil is, at least you know it's olives. It's good for you. Yeah. And, we're, and Nuttalex always came in its own container, didn't yeah. it? Yeah. With well, a name on top, whereas butter comes in like a silver, like a, a foil. I love that bit of foil you rip off. The spreadable one. The spreadable one. You, you love the foil coming off the top of the butter I in like the that. container. Yeah, sometimes they have a bit of paper too, that little bit of wax paper. And, and what's your aim in the tip peeling off? Is this the, the pleasure of the I go pulling? straight off. I know some of the kids peel it halfway. What are you peeling it halfway for? Because I was peeling a, a, a coconut. Yeah, it might be so you can roll it back. You know, in different countries, I learned this from going to Switzerland, they have different ways of what doing the butter. So, you know, how, how would you scrape the butter? You go back and forth oh, like this that? This is interesting. Back and forth? I just go scrape along the top. Okay. So, when my dad stayed with um, Glenn, my twin, with Roberta, Roberta said, someone has been <laughs> scraping the butter the wrong way. And they go is, from the end. They go from end to end, like downwards. But where's the? But what's the butter on? Just on a plate. Yeah, it must be on a plate or something. And so he was just. Dad was going scrape across the top, whereas they go from the end, chop a little bit off. In like our a house, this is how we do it. This is how we do it. Someone has been doing it wrong. So they cut it off like a bit of cheese. Yes, because with a scrape across the top, you can just get a lovely that's little bit. We, we, but that's the problem with butter. If it's come out of the fridge and you yeah. you, you want to make a quick bit of toast, yeah. you put the butter on, you tear the bread. Yes. You tear the bread. Oh, no. Oh, I haven't got time to make another bit of toast. What do I do? Oh. So, you know, but that's real. But here's the problem. I, our butter container mm. is, is, is a bit of crockery. Oh, you've got one of those ones. Yeah. You know, the lid, and I get quite nervous because I've got a bit of butter on my fingers. Then I go to put the lid back. I was thinking I'm going to drop it because it's a very special one with butter written on it. Yeah, get you caught. are getting old if you've got a butter container. Well, hang on. But what do you <laughs> but you put yours just on a flat plate, do you? No, nah, it's just wrapped up in foil, wrapped up. Well, you leave it wrapped up in the foil, you put it back in the fridge. Yeah, but that's, we don't use – I use that butter for cooking. I've got spreadable butter in a tub. I buy spreadable butter. So you leave it in the container? Yeah. It's not as classy. It's not as no, it's not as classy. You're and right. then – and that's where you – because I took the top off a yogurt the other day and that's ones that you've got to go slowly on because if you don't eat all the yogurt, you want to roll it back. Was used yeah. to, and I tore it too quickly, and I tore it in half. I hate that. And I go, and you go, oh no, ruined. What, what, what do I do now? You've ruined it. Got to put a foil over the top. Uh, but yeah, that looks terrible in the fridge, doesn't uh, it? You go, that what's going on there? And there's only a little bit of yogurt left. You know, things that oh, are left in the fridge. Oh, I think we can have some thinking music now. Well, perfect lob too. We, we, we'll, Let's do an ad. Let's do the ad. You want? I can't start. I can't. I can't say it. Read it. Read it. The, what is it? The Rita the Eater Eater, wasn't it? So it's Eater Eater. Rita the Eater Eater. We'll find out. Because we're getting memories, and our memories are often distorted um, and clogged. Especially and, mine. You know. And especially because, you know, with the cholesterol build up from eating too much butter, <laughs> we may not be remembering it correctly. I always right. thought it sounded like she was up to no good. Yes. When she announced who she was. And what, yes. And I always, as a ki- even as a kid, I thought, what are you actually eating? It does sound a little bit it's weird. Are. Hello. Hello. Let's hear it. Look at the monkey! Oh, I'm starving! Me too! Suze, did you bring the, um... No, I thought... <gasps> Yoo-hoo! Whoa! It's Rita the Eater Eater! Oh, Rita! G'day, love! No Eater Five Star! No worries, loves! Eater Five Star! Spread so smooth, tastes just great! <laughs> what do you reckon, loves? Rita! Rita! Eater Five Star! Great taste, great value! <laughs> Took me right back. It did too. 
I'm sure some of our listeners and people who hadn't heard it before would be going, oh, that's extraordinary. That's, that's an ad. And they, an, an advertising agency got paid for that. Wow. And imagine if you were Rita, you go down the shops and people go, are you Rita the Eater, Rita? Yeah, it's all right. She, she, I think, by memory, she's quite a famous actor. That, yeah, I think, I think so. she's quite, excuse me, I'm burping, but quite a famous actor. No, no, in terms of, I look, I've looked that ad up on YouTube and I reckon she's quite a famous actress, that woman. Anyway, what's your answer? Oh, what's my answer? I reckon this is – I think it's a walk-up start for me. I reckon this is easy. I reckon I've got it. I reckon margarine, when they first made it – but you said Napoleon. I was going to say back in the 60s when they first made it. Uh, in the heating, in the cooking process, it always came out pink and then they had to artificially colour it to make it look like butter. So it was pink before it was yellow. I think oh, – I was going to say something similar. I reckon they coloured it pink for some reason. I don't know why. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll, yeah, we'll find out. Yep. Yeah. What is the answer, Sam? In the United States of America, states passed laws that required margarine to be dyed so it didn't look like butter. Some states toyed with red or even black margarine, but pink became the most prominent. Laws about the color of margarine were on the books until the 1950s and 60s in many states. Wow. Well, that would kill them. I mean, there's no way that you're going to put something pink on your... On How your... powerful is the butter lobby where they can make margarine manufacturers dye their margarine pink? You have been listening to Somehow Related with Glenn Robbins and Dave O'Neill. But isn't that the same with uh, aren't the milk people getting up? No, the is it the milk oh, the people, so, the soy milk, and those people. The, and the milk people going, it's not milk. Yeah, against the nut people. Yeah, they say you're using the word milk on almond milk. It's not milk. And the champagne people get upset when you call it champagne. You go, only champagne comes from yeah. champagne. So only only um, butter comes from can be yellow. Imagine that. What? A, and they did it, obviously. Pink margarine. How's that? Having, having said that, it's all about the mindset. As I said, you drink black water. I love Diet Coke. And you, um, and what, you know, we drink what, what, beer, what's, the, what's, the, what's the one I was talking about before? Hazelnut, whatever. That, it's a Nutella. Nutella. That's, that's a brown smear. Vegemite. Black. Vegemite's black. You know, um, so it's all a mindset. So I, I, I don't, I've, it'd be a big advertising campaign to go from yellow. We've gone from yellow to pink. Don't be yeah. alarmed. You know. God, if pink was around back then, she would have got a good, good, good coin out of doing ads. Oh. Hi, I'm pink, and this is margarine. It's also pink, and they're both great. Yeah. You, you're a rock star. Yeah. Wasn't there well, a... I'm, I'm going to say this, mm. but I, I say it with some reluctance. What's that? The name of the film was Last Tango in, pa- in Paris. Oh, yeah. Didn't something happen in that film? Oh, with margarine. Was it margarine or butter? Oh, it was butter, I think. It would have to be butter. It would have to be butter. I reckon it was butter. I don't know what he did, but it certainly wasn't whacking on a, an old pancake <laughs> <laughs> or making a school lunch. <laughs> I remember my thing about airplanes. I was oh, on the, yes. I was, I was, so I was on the airplane. This is true. And we were waiting for – and they made the announcement. Would f- uh, Peter Adams, uh, Georgia Adams and S- Sally Adams please make their way to gate eight? We're waiting for you to take off. And then about a minute later, would Sally Adams, Peter Adams, Adams – would the Adams family please – and I went – I yelled out, we're waiting for the Adams family, are we? <laughs> then I started going, dun 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 and then uh, other people started doing it. <laughs> and then the Adams family turned up and the woman was in a wheelchair. God, I feel bad. I feel really <sighs> bad. <laughs> We've just been handed a note by Riyadh, the manager of the pub. Cleaners walking through shortly. Well, thank God we're finished, haven't we, Glenn? We have, and we welcome the cleaners. Bring them on. Uh, yeah, bring them on. I know it's a bit dirty around here.